the privatization of warfare is one of the key sort of secret trends the past two or so decades that most Americans have no idea about. Mm -hmm. Yet it is it could become one of the dominant themes of insecurity in the 21st century. So let me back up and say that this all began with the, with the privatization revolution of Ronald Reagan and Maggie Thatcher in the UK, where we need like we need to have less government. I remember Reagan saying like government's not the solution; it's the problem. Mm -hmm. And we started to outsource stuff, right? right? But initially, it wasn't things like the military. I mean, it was just stuff like bureaucracy. And the idea of the military, that was like never supposed to be privatized because it was what they called an inherently governmental function. Mm -hmm. We were never going to privatize trigger pullers. So how did we get from the 1980s to, you know, fast forward 30 some years later, and we've got Blackwater or DynCorp in battle. We have armed civilians doing paramilitary things. How did we get to that? Well, the way that it's sort of a long, torturous road, but basically when, you know, when George W. declared war on Iraq in 2003, nobody in the White House, everybody thought in the White House that this, this, that war would last like days, weeks at the most, not months, right, mm -hmm. much less years. And they quickly found out that they were strategically, frankly, stupid, um, and this war was not going to end. And they had three really bad policy choices. One is they could just leave and admit defeat, which they weren't going to do. The second is we have an all-volunteer military that couldn't find enough volunteers to actually sustain the long war. So we could have like a Vietnam draft to force Americans into the military, and that would be political suicide. Or three, we can hire contractors to sell out the ranks. So they started the, the contractor thing, and it's not just a Republican, but, you know, President Obama did the same thing in mm -hmm. Afghanistan. And it got to be so much that, you know, half of the military force in Iraq and Afghanistan, or over half, was contractors. There was a one-to-one -one ratio of, for every troop, there was a contractor. And, you know, to give perspective, in World War II, it was only 10%. Now it's like 50%, 70%. And when I talk to like foreign media, they always ask me, is contracting the new way of war? Because, you know, that seems to be, and that's sort of what Eric Prince is suggesting with Afghanistan recently, that we contract 100% to, to contractors. Now, most of these contractors are not lethal contractors. They're just, you know, guys, again, cooking food, repairing vehicles, doing innocuous things in a war zone. And they're not like soldiers. About 15% mm -hmm. were trigger pullers. But that number is growing. And what we, what U.S. has created now, after the U.S. sort of drew down from Afghanistan and Iraq, is that a lot of those, those guys or mercenaries, essentially, are now in the open market. And we're seeing other countries imitate the U.S. model. Nigeria hired mercenaries to go after Boko Haram. They did. They successfully pushed up Boko Haram from Nigeria. We see mercenaries in, you know, Yemen killing Houthis. We see mercenaries all over Syria and Iraq, Afghanistan. All over the Ukraine, both sides. So Eastern Ukraine is a shooting war right now. We don't doesn't get covered much in the news. But both Russia hires mercenaries and, and Ukraine hires mercenaries. You know, mercenary warfare is back after you know, 300 years of hiding the shadows. It's now being resurrected, and we're getting to a point now where you know, what happens if Exxon Mobil hires its own military? I mean, that where some random billionaire or some oligarch. That's the world we're facing in the decades mm. ahead of us. 